all are invited to my lockdown party. I'm getting locked up uh, on the 17th for being around my baby. And even though I wasn't around her for a couple months, I let it be known blatantly that there's no way in hell I'm not going to try to be around my baby. Because that's what the Almighty said. He said, teach your child when you rise up, when you sit down, when you go about your way. So the magistrate is biased as hell. I got all the evidence in the world. I even talked to a lawyer and the lawyer told me that he don't think he can help me. I, and I, I already won the case. I already show, put all the evidence in. It's just all being ignored. It's okay. Let him, the slave master, go ahead and lock me down. Why do I say slave master? Because according to the scriptures, only in slavery can you take away somebody's child and they have no might in their hand to save them. And that's basically what they're doing. They're taking away my baby. And I'm not going out without no motherfucking fight. So, you know, let me become a martyr. Lock me up for my baby. I'm going to come out stronger than ever. The only time I ever got locked, I was in college for six days. And I'm going to tell you, after I got out of there, I... I got straight A's that, that's that quarter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what's up? What's up, y'all? What's up, Sonya? What's up? Um, man, I got locked up for six days for fighting. Came out, made straight A's. You know what I'm saying? So, look, I'm already going door to door. I'm already going to make it to city council or at least get on the ballot. You know what I'm saying? I'm already going door to door, talking to fathers, going downtown, talking to them. I got many different ones. So they got the right father. They think they're going to lock me up just for wanting to be around my child. I let him know. But you know what? He don't even let me talk in court. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and make a presentation before I even get there. Um, I'm going to have it on video so that, so that they don't have to listen to me talk and get... And me get cut off all the time and him try to direct what I got to say and try to cut me off and try to say, well, say, talk about it and, and mess up my train of thought. I'm going to go ahead and just put all my points down on video and allow them to watch that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sonya. I appreciate it. I appreciate the love, man. I don't even give a fuck. Lock me down, that motherfucker. Take him all my vitamins and everything, COVID-19. Over there in them cells, it is what it is. I'm fighting. And um, anyone that wants to join me, it, I mean, let me know when you got a court date. I'm coming there to your court date. I'm, I'm going to be out there with a, bull, with a bullhorn. I'm going to be out there with my microphone. And I'm going to be talking to people. Because parental alienation for pay has to stop. They, those children's services go and take children from these women. Yeah, man. These children's services take. I appreciate you, Ryan. They they take they take uh the children from these women and they're ignorant. They don't know. Oh, they don't have a search warrant. They ain't allowed to come in your house. They don't. Ha and even if they got a search warrant, that search warrant might might say you only need to talk to the child. Well, that means you need to read and you need to have an understanding. I'm gonna make sure that everybody, every man, woman. Every father or mother and mother knows their rights in regards to children's services because all they do is take your children for pay. I mean, the law is when they steal your children through ch uh, child protective services. The law says they're supposed to go with a family member first, priority. Well, they don't even tell women that. They, they, they take their child and they put them in the system because the system gets them money. They don't... They don't uh, tell this, this woman, you know what, do you have any family members that they can go with or anything like that? They don't never inform them or nothing. They don't never follow their case plan. And you should never consent to them. Don't sign nothing with them. Once you sign something with them, it's a wrap. You know what I mean? Same thing with child support. It's a contract. You need to deny the contract. Because once you get on that contract, people say, oh, yeah, well, it's okay. You're supporting your child. But once you get on that contract, they have an incentive to make sure you're not around your child. Because if you're around him for over 90 days, you ha they have to lower it according to Ohio law by at least 10%. And they don't want to do that. They get a cut. 
They even had a, a Texas governor come out and say, oh, we made uh, $4.8 billion last year in child support revenues. Not to the women that got the money, but no, to the state. The state got $4.8 billion from keep, and these, these are not all deadbeat fathers. These are no, no. The whole deadbeat concept right there, that's a farce. When you have a situation where you're an unmarried father and you have a child, you have no rights to him until you go in front of a biased magistrate. And, hope, and for them, hopefully by that time, you're on some type of child support so they can oppress you. So, like I said, it's going down when it comes down to me educating. I got booklets from different people about how to handle situations. I also have um, templates like the Freedom of Information Act. And that's how I'm going to get my, um, my audio visual of what happened in the courtroom. Because this man talked to me like a dog. He talked to me like an animal. You know, I go on in that courtroom, he don't let me say nothing. Last time I had a hearing, he wanted to tell me we, he don't have time for me to say nothing. I said, this is a hearing. You're supposed to hear me. But there is no justice unless you, and then they say, oh, you got to get a lawyer. That, I, I tried to get a lawyer. And I told the lawyer, only thing I need you to do as a lawyer is make sure that this man don't abuse me and I can present my evidence. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do nothing else. He didn't, he didn't like that because they, well, they want to play that money game. Listen, I don't, ha I don't have to pay you thousands of dollars. All I need you to do is be a bodyguard. Be a bodyguard in there because the thing about it is when you go into juvenile court, a lot of people believe, oh, it's, it's a courthouse, so they're going to do the right thing. Hell no. It's behind closed doors. I can show you two documents where our elected judge, Melissa Powers, over there in the juvenile court has denied me uh, the audio visual tape of what happened. They want to say, oh, because of your, because they don't have nothing on me. I'm a, like I said, I'm a teacher. I got my FBI, BCI background check. And not even my, the mother of my child can say I ever put my hands on her. They ain't not going to go that far. So they don't have nothing on me. So what they say is the way I conducted myself at the trial is the reason that he feels as though I am an extreme danger to him, I'm an emotionally disturbed, and I need to take a psychological evaluation in order to see my child. But when you look on in Ohio on civil civil rule 35, it says when you, and, I, and I, I presented it to him, and he totally ignored it. Said it wasn't a motion, it was a document, and he ignored it. But it says if you're gonna order a father to take a psychological evaluation, you need to first Tell him where to go and who to go to, who to report to. You're supposed to have all that in line. You're not supposed to just say, go take a psychological report and go. That's just not how it works. But same thing with mothers. Mothers don't know anything when they walk up in that courtroom. And it, when, they, when they went up in there and took their child, they went over there to the schoolhouse and talked to their child like, oh, yeah, um, little Johnny, um, does, it, does, does she ever give you a whooping? Do, do you have any? Do you have anything in your body? There's documentation that you're supposed to put in into your school to make sure that they they can, they cannot talk to your child about anything like that, regardless if your child did say something that they feel as though is uh, is something called the ha a Hague report. It's something called a Hague report that you're supposed to get the template and write exactly what you. Say, it's already there. I don't want my child talk. You don't want you talking to my child about this. I don't want you talking to my child about that. Because children's services will steal your child. They, your child fell down on the playground or whatever the case is. Got a bruise right here. Ain't got nothing to do with you. And they asking your child, oh, does she, what does she do to you? Does, nah, nah. That's why, like I said, they got the right father. Because they want to lock me up and all types of stuff like that. This is my mission. This is my life mission now. I'm going to make sure they lose. They're going to lose money fucking with me. They're going to lose. And in fact, I'm going to save a couple of children from going into the system. So they can, you know what I mean? So somebody can take advantage of them, man. All types of rapes and things of that nature. Like I said, we need fathers, man. The, re the main reason why relationships don't work out is because a woman and a man don't have that father example. That woman don't have that example of a man that, know, that treats them correctly. That no, well, you a woman once she, she has a good father who been treating her good her whole life, she's not gonna, she's not gonna tolerate a man who not treating her good. But the fact is, when you have a situation where fathers don't have no rights to their child when they're born, that separates it, and also it also messes up the man, because you don't teach a man, you supposed to teach a man as a father. 
as a father, I know what men do. Our men are supposed to teach their young boys to control not only their emotion, but control themselves in general. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we teach. And that's one thing that we can do. We can control, control your emotions. Control, you know what I'm saying, your actions. You know what I mean? <laughs> Self-control is what a father teaches his child. Well, we got so many men out here who don't have no control. So emotionally, just emotions running just everywhere. So, you know what I'm saying? Really, I'm at work. This is my little break. Yeah, I got to get back in there. But uh, peace out, though.